So we've got another project to work on. Yeah, we just finished the brakes. Now we get to do this. Yeah. So this over here is what we've currently got in store. I've pulled out most of the parts and just kind of set them here. And it it, it is literally a mess right now. We've got wiring harnesses we got to hook up, and I don't even know what half the stuff really is for. Um, most of it I do. It's pretty standard wiring for a radio install. We've got the standard wiring harnesses, which I'm very familiar with. I've done it before. Uh, the things that I'm not familiar with are the backup camera, and then, of course, there's some radio controls that connect to the steering wheel. I have never dealt with that before. The steering wheel controls looks like they came up, came with some harnesses. Um, I'm not sure which one, because they have this one, which I have no idea what it's for. Looks like a power adapter with a ground and a positive on there. So maybe that's part of it. I've got, this is the backup camera, which we're not installing. Um, those are for the subwoofer kit. This is a GPS antenna. Um, the vehicle already has a GPS in it, so maybe we can use what's already in there. These I have no idea. It's two RCA style connectors with some red wires hooked up in addition. So we'll have to read the manual and see if we can figure it out. I'm going to start with what I know. I'm sure so many people are cringing right now. They're like, you don't know what the f*** that is? You're a dumbass. Why do you even bother doing this? Well, if that doesn't work out, I'm just not going to connect it. We can sure. YouTube it later. So this is what we ended up picking up. It's a Boss Audio Systems double din deck. It's a BVN V9384RC. Just in case. It's only $190, bucks, I think. Got it for $125. That's a hell of a deal. Probably hot as f <laughs> It was stolen. We you are... drop it, man. That thing is burning your hand right now. <laughs> Shut up, phone. I don't want to listen to you right now. So this is pretty standard and simple stuff. Um, each of these are color-coded to match the color code to the harness that goes to the stereo, which this part will plug into the back, and this will st plug into the stock harness on the Scion. Used to solder them, but crimping is so much easier because you don't have to deal with wrapping it in either shrink wrap insulation or the even lower tech way is electrical tape, which is what I like to use. But this turns out so much cleaner. For the record, I didn't buy them. We had Jack go pick them up. Oh, you freaking bitch. I was gonna say fucking cunt, but you can't put that on video. There you go. Oh, you all right, so as I just discovered, these red butt ends are actually too big for this application. So we are going to go ahead and switch it out to the soldering method. So I've got my soldering iron, it's plugged in and warming up. I've got my beautiful Radio Shack solder, which you can't get anymore. So this is super rare. We're, 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 that? That's like an antique. I know, we're gonna be throwing money down the drain. This is going to take a moment for the soldering iron to warm up, so there we go. Now what I like to do is use the soldering iron to heat up the wire itself because the copper that's in this wire heats up very quickly and very well, and so I can get this thing coated. So that's the first one. It was copper colored, so that's coated in uh, the silver colored solder. You can now tell that it's evenly coated. Now I'm going to do the other end. These are both purple and black. It's nice that they're colored and coated so that you know exactly what you're connecting to. Now the Boss kit, their wires are not copper. So now they're connected together. You can see how easily that just bonded. I had them both coated properly with solder and so all it did was heating them both up together to get them to connect. Now that one was easy. 
So this is my uh, famous electrical tape insulation work. And those aren't coming apart at all. So what I just grabbed here was the um, Sobo for wiring kit. It has all the power wires we need. The thing that's most important though for this is um, there is a, I usually call it a remote wire. The wiring harness for the stereo system calls it PCOT. Whatever the hell that means, I have no clue. I've never seen it referenced as that before, but I Google it and it's the same thing. So basically this runs from the deck and it tells the subwoofer amplifier to turn on. Because otherwise, uh, if it didn't have something like this, it would be constantly on and every time you went to go drive your vehicle again, it would be dead. There you go, wheels. The requisite injury. Remember, I'm working on your stuff. Now, to get access to the mounting screws for this radio, I went ahead and just removed the panel that was surrounding it which included the vents. So the next step is obviously to move the radio. There's two screws on either side here attaching to a bracket mounting it to the back here. I should be able to get away with just the ones on the side. So that's the stock deck right there. There's a lot of connectors in back there. And so I know for sure we're gonna use two of them, but there's one, two, three, four that aren't gonna be going anywhere anymore. I know some of them um, over here, it's off screen here, but the auxiliary input that comes with the car and then there's a iPod hooked up. So I'm betting one of the be for one of these the other one probably this one is probably goes to the antenna maybe i'm not sure but the other two one of them is going to be uh, the controls for the steering wheel these last two i have no idea so we'll have to figure that out Right now I'm just installing the stock brackets back on the, this radio. Um, I'm actually over here comparing it to the stock radio to make sure they line up pretty close to the same position. So we're just gonna mock fit this right now and see how it looks. And I think that looks pretty good. That's just about perfect. Now I'm gonna find these adapters. They're essentially inserts that come along the side here. And it'll fill in that empty space that you'll get after you install this one because the edges on this one are square and not rounded like the stock one has. All right, so that's set. The next step is to install those wiring harnesses that we took our time to solder together so carefully and hook them in here and here. Before we close everything up, we're gonna run a test on it and see that it works and we'll actually get to see how it sounds. Now this is the remote wire that I'm going to try and um, just run down into the dash. All 
All right, well, looks like it powered on okay. It's not mounted by any stretch of the imagination. It's trying to tune in the radio right now, but obviously that's not gonna work out. That does look pretty sick compared to the old set. That's infinitely easier to use than the old system. You don't have to wait for it to open. <laughs> All right, so this is day two of the aftermarket deck install, this Boss stereo system that we picked up for the Scion. Uh, yesterday, we just got so as far as verifying that it works. The only part that we haven't actually gotten around to taking care of is the security feature for DVDs. Uh, it is illegal to drive around with uh, DVD playing in view of the driver. It is really nice. Um, just explored it a little bit yesterday and I'm fairly impressed with this unit. So what we're going to do today is um, instead of going to the effort to figure out how to hook it up to the emergency brake like you're supposed to, we're just going to bypass the system altogether and make it think that the emergency brake is on constantly which is actually easier to do than doing it the correct way <laughs> it is f***ing stupid um, i imagine all i'd have to do is either connect it directly to power or the accessory system i'm probably gonna just gonna do the accessory system and see if that works out for us we'll uh, just test it by making contact to an exposed lead first to make sure that it indeed will work before we actually uh, finalize it by soldering it all together well the other thing that i assumed was going to be a problem was i was looking at the connector's in the back here, and there's a square one that I thought was for the antenna. And sometimes on stock systems, they are different. Therefore, you buy an adapter, connect to the stock antenna, and it converts it to the standard round connector. After doing some research, I've discovered that was actually for the GPS antenna. And uh, the regular connector just fell into the dash, and it's right here. And so that's going to be super easy just to plug in. So we will have AM FM radio after we're done with this install today. So yesterday we got an error that says driving while watching video is not permitted. Engage the emergency brake to watch video. So the solution is to go ahead and ground this against the ground wire running into the deck. Um, which is going to be the black wire. We verified this works, so I'm actually going to remove it from the vehicle and go ahead and quick solder this wire up. There is this monster, and it has pretty much everything you need. You could do RCA inputs, and then it has video output and the camera input. And then here's a pair of subwoofer outputs. And I think it's interesting to note that they're both black. And I'm going to assume that means they're not splitting it up between left and right signal. They're sending it both straight to the back of the unit. So I'm going to grab the RCA cable that's running to the back. So this one's got the RCA style hookups. And it's not going to matter which one matches up to what. Because these are not colored. They do not differentiate between right and left. So now I've got it plugged in on this end. This end will run through the car and connect into the amplifier. So I'm gonna thread these back down through the dash. try and do navigation. Oh, it's, I'm gonna kill myself every time it tries to load this. 
because it has to load completely. I'm gonna shut this off before I kill the battery. So we're gonna go ahead and button this up, this top part up, and all my wires are down here underneath the dash, so. Two clips right there. That's perfect. All right, so this is what we got. So the inserts are right here. They're holding in just fine. There is absolutely no gap along this. Well, there's a little bit over along the inserts, but it's only accentuated because the light is so bright. It almost looks like it belongs there factory. So it doesn't get much better than that. So that mess right there is what we got to deal with next. That's the remote wire and the RC wire, and then we'll run the, the power cable directly from the battery to the back all right so i put everything back to the way it was when we got it except for we got a brand new shiny aftermarket deck in there i also went ahead and ran the cabling for the subwoofers it's essentially all ran it just has to be wired up the hard part was running it because with subwoofers you want to run the RCA cable separate from the power you can get some distortion from your sound as it travels the audio travels along and then the power cable interference with the signal going back there and it just sounds like crap so what we did is we ran the remote cable and the RCA cable it ran down below the radio it's behind the glove box and then it runs up the door frame into the headliners it's actually underneath here um, you can see a little loom it was actually already up there I just used it to hide it and so it continues to run along the headliner there's a flaw in my work I'll have to rectify that it's a pain so there you can kind of see what you got to go through to hide it you got to get it tucked underneath the headliner and then you got to put the headliner back in place just like I did there and so I continued it running along here and then um, this panel right here pops out a little bit so I was able to drop it down and then this panel for the conversion was already there so I just ran the cords out here so they're just gonna sit here until I uh, go ahead and have a amp to hook them up to now you can see the power cable coming out from underneath this cover right here. But it's literally run underneath the cover down the opposite side of the vehicle. Right there is where it comes out through the firewall. And I literally just have it tied to the battery handle for now. I don't want any power running through that until it's connected to something. Alright, so, beard boy is a beard, and uh, Mad Dog and I are going to wing this, aren't we? Straight. Yeah, I'm straight. So, we're setting up a new sub for the car. It used to be in this box over here, but that's just way too f***ing big for the little car it's going in. So, I ordered a new box, and we're going to put one of the speakers from this box into there. So we finally finalized the install of the audio system and uh, all that's left is to show off how it looks and how it sounds. So let's turn it on. So here's radio, this is what comes on when you first turn it on. 
We were staying in Paris to get away from your parents, and I thought, wow, if I could take this in a shot right now. And this is the volume button, and if you want to mute it, it's uh, just a simple push right there, and that just completely cancels out any audio coming through there. And it's got a full 10 channel equalizer with presets on here. I of course equalized it to get a little bit more bass that will amplify the subwoofer we've got back there. But I'm going to go ahead and show you all the features it has. The disc um, that'll play DVDs or CDs depending on what you have loaded. Pretty sure Terminator's still in here. Either that or I took it out and there's nothing in there. Yep, here's Terminator. This this is not hooked up, but it does have a no, it's got an auxiliary input down here behind this. But there's also I think an auxiliary in back that's not hooked up. And I just accidentally hit the setup button. You can see right there, there's the auxiliary input, and then you have a USB drive you could plug in here. We actually had this uh, running the other day with a USB drive with some videos on there we could just watch. Um, and this card right here is to load GPS information on there, but I'm not even going to bother with that since we don't have the GPS hooked up currently. Um, you can use the phone, and so you can go ahead and dial whoever's number you want, and there's a microphone right up there. That's the infrared receiver for the remote. We've got the radio, disc, navigation we don't use, and the phone. Music and videos, that's for streaming stuff off of like a USB drive, and I've been able to do that before. I don't have anything loaded on there currently, so I can't show that off. But none of that matters because my favorite feature is streaming via Bluetooth. And it actually integrates with whatever streaming service you have on your phone. Uh, the one that we like is Spotify, and so this is actually streaming via Spotify through Bluetooth from the phone. So that's just showing off how the subwoofer sounds. Now I know you guys aren't going to be able to tell just how hard it hits. But you can see the mirror shaking and you can just see how hard the speaker was hitting just as we were playing it on that song. And then to show off what we got, we've got a Pioneer 400 watt amp uh, powering this uh, kicker subwoofer and then of course uh, single speaker ported box and so with all that combination together it sounds absolutely amazing i'm very happy with how hard it hits certainly not as good as it was in the van but we're only running half the speakers and i'm completely okay with that it's still plenty hard for what we got back in here and uh, show off the rest of the menus on this thing. Um, of course, pictures. And that's the auxiliary input. There's an AV input on the back if you want to um, set that up. And then here's the camera in case you wanted to use a reverse camera, which we don't have installed. 
and then if you want to mess with settings and that's just general things like the clock date um, audio settings so things like you can turn reverb on or you can set the EQ here um, the most critical thing we set here is the subwoofer cutoff um, it'll cut off all audio above 120 Hertz back to the subwoofer and that can control just how full of a sound that you get back there um, the different settings of course are 80, 120 and 160 and I felt like um, 120 is very middle of the road and it's pretty much perfect for what we needed it for so and that's pretty much showing off the entire install and what we did and how it operates for a boss system it's pretty damn good so I don't think that uh, you would need anything better than what we've installed in here for any application ever you know not unless you want to drop you know thousands of dollars on something that's professional and this is pretty darn close in my opinion so that's pretty much it, and thanks for watching.